Welcome to another episode of CVTV. My name is Carlos, and I am here with my co-host, David Dock, and owner of Corby. How are you, Dave? Doing good, man. How's it going today? I'm doing well. I see that you guys have the uh, the SMT machine running in the back. Yeah, we got we, we can't keep up, Carlos. I mean, uh, right now we're running more XP8s. It's, it's a hot commodity, so yeah. we're happy about that. I, I appreciate everyone's support, and Get them while you can. If you see them in stock somewhere and you, you're thinking about it, I can't promise they'll last long. <laughs> no, we, they're like we build them the, as fast as we can. Believe me, they are hard to get right now. Yeah. Some people are calling it unicorns. Yeah, <laughs> you know, which makes makes me laugh. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so, um, uh, how's the weather down in Louisiana today? I heard yeah, that it's, it's, it's perfect. A, it's, picture perfect day we don't get too many like this down here it's like 70 oh. degrees sun so it's a beautiful spring day now most people i think 70 degrees is a little cold but not in louisiana because you still have to take into consideration what is it about 70 80 percent humidity yeah it's so, always usually in that range so yeah so uh, it's 70 a little degrees crisp, but it's still nice 70 degrees with that much of humidity it probably feels perfect oh yeah it feels yeah. perfect. Unlike shade, Chicago, it's a little cool. Yeah, unlike Chicago, I it's forty degrees outside and raining right now. Mm, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to say hello to everybody. I want to say hello, to David Paulson. I want to say hello to Connor's here. Greg Carroll's are here. So our our our, our membership drive leader is here as well. Yeah, uh, Mark nice. Henry, Mark Henry is here. Chris Conti is here as well. Uh, Drex is also here. And uh, so thank you so much for joining us. We have a great show today. Um, uh, it's more t geared towards beginners, correct, Dave? We're what are I we talking about so. today? We're talking about lighting today. And it's really, Carlos, it's a pretty controversial subject. And it is. And it's a, it's, it's a people, I think people make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Yep. And uh, I think that we're going to keep it simple. I don't think we're going to get too technical, so we're going to make it this for the, for newbies. So if you're a newbie and you're watching this, hopefully you'll walk away with a little knowledge of it without yeah. getting overloaded with too much technicalities out there. You know, I always say you got to learn the algebra before you learn calculus. So you can't right. jump into really technical stuff before before you learn the basics. So, yeah. all right. So before we get this thing going, I, you know, it's like we have sponsors in this, you know, for the show. So today's show, today's episode is actually sponsored by MaxPix Jump LED Lighting Systems. For unbeatable value, use MaxPix Jump LED Fixture to light up your aquarium and enjoy seeing your color pop. MaxPix offers two models, the original L165 fixture and the brand new BAM Blue 165 fixture. And that thing is blue. Check yeah. with your local fish store, supply, or your favorite online retailer for availability and pricing. Yeah, I've seen the blue one, and it's nice. Yeah, a lot of people that have gotten them already are like, wow, man, this thing's got some real pop to it. So. You know, and they, and I've heard compared to the other lighting out there that that, that is in the twenty gallon range, those things have those things have a pop power behind it. Yeah, yeah, there's some power behind it. So, all right, so let's get started here. Yeah, why is lighting so important and so confusing? Let's just ask the basic question. You know, not, let's not break it down into different types of lighting. It's like, why is it important and why is it so damn confusing? Well, I think, uh, you know, first of all, why is it important? I think that's your, your main energy source, your food source for your animals. And that's how they grow, right? That's how they grow. I mean, that's that's it's nature. You know, they need that. They need lighting, sunlight and as it penetrates the reef and uh, in our aquariums, we need the same thing. So. But it takes time. I know that even with everything, let's let's just talk about this real quick. It, it everything happens doesn't happen overnight. Right. So you know, if you install your lighting and you want things to grow, it's gonna take some time. I mean, a tank to look good, it'll take about three years, right? I mean, we we've seen tanks. I mean, I, we have a great picture of a 2011 and 2013 tank in here, and take a look at that. Yep. That is a, you know, at the top is the same tank in 2011. And then you go down and look at it in 2013. So really it takes it. time. It's 
things are not going to happen overnight and colors are not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a lot of time. That so, goes to one of the biggest things in the hobby, Carlos, I think it's patience and yes. everybody wants an Insta reef now. Yeah. So, Absolutely. You, you, you could try and do it, but it's not my recommendation. Exactly. I mean, take a look at the, we have this beautiful, there's a beautiful brain coral that I remember from Jeremy, you know, that Jeremy had. And it just went from this tiny little thing that was the size of a golf ball to yeah. this huge brain coral, the size of a basketball that you would see on a reef out in the wild. But again, yeah. it just takes a long time for things like that to happen, you know, and also there, you know, you, you also have to take into consideration that there are other elements that have to go right in order for a coral to, to get yeah. to that size and that coloration, which is kind of cool. Okay, so what else is lighting important with? He broke up on me, Carlos. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, what else is lighting important with? You know, what else is lighting good with? You there? Yes, I'm here. Hello? Well, it sounds like I am. I missed... Um, Okay, so it sounds like we've lost uh, we lost uh, David Dakin in here. So one of the other important things about lighting is pH balance. So okay. P pH is a great, great um, um, example of what lighting does. For some reason, you know, and there's a chemical reason to it. There's a, there's a, there's actually an explanation to it, but we're not going to go into it. You know, when you turn on your lights, pH goes up. You know, when you turn off your lights, pH tends to go down. So good lighting, also, you know, pH and corals, you know, as everything else in life, you know, if you're a gardener, you know that plants grow at a certain pH, certain plants grow at a better at a certain pH. Corals are the same way. You know, they usually they usually like eight and up, you know, and if you get to below seven, then you're you're kind of, you know, you're kind of stunting the grow a little bit. Yeah, yeah we right. kind of delved into that, you know, in our yes. past shows and how. Once those lights go out, that pH starts to plummet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So how, do you that, how do you keep that buffer? So yeah. How yeah. lighting plays a part of Yeah. That. And if you want to know how you want to keep the pH from dropping when you turn off your lights, watch one of our previous workshops. We have a, we've just done a previous workshop a couple of times ago, and it was all about pH. We went over how pH works and very inexpensive ways to very expensive ways of keeping your pH. So watch that. So the other thing that I like about lighting is the more it's it's a more, more selfish thing. And it's just the aesthetics. I mean, yeah. The reason why we have our fish tanks is yes, is because we like the chemistry, we like to tinker with things, we like to see coral grows growth, but at this but at, at the end of it all is we just like the visual it's it's yeah. it's it's a living organism slash art piece that comes with it yeah. so depending on the lighting that you have you can get a you know if you're like if you like a yellowish tank if you like a whitish tank if you like a bluish tank you know it all depends on your lights it's just like anything else in life light can make a difference light can make or break it and and make a something really beautiful or or look at it and make it look washed out I think that's one of the controversial subjects in this, Carlos. It's like mm -hmm. what part, you know, we, we're thinking about the human eye and what aesthetically looks pleasing to our eye. Yes. What is this? What is it for the animals that they really need? Exactly. And there's some and there's some very passionate people out yeah. there that will, will tell you, no, this is right. And this right. is the only yeah. way it works. And, yeah. you know, the honest truth is that there is no right or there's no uh, wrong. I mean, there's so many, there's so many ways to to get the corals to grow, um, uh, combination light and all that. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But at the end of the day, it's just what you like to see. You know, some people like blue. I don't like my tank to be blue. It actually gives me a headache. Yeah. And I'm sitting yeah. by my tank all day long. I don't want to have a headache for the entire day. So I like, you know what? I'm an old school reefer. I've been around, you know, I've been doing this for over 20 years. And back in those days, it was it was a white tank with a with a blue accent. Now it's a blue tank with a blue accent. You know, so it all depends on where we we've been. You know, in our course of uh, reef keeping, and we're going back to VHO days. So you know, exactly. And then we go into 
metal halides that were made by Awasaki, and it was like these 6,500K. And if you ran those things, man, they could grow corals. But if you didn't have any supplements, oh man, my God. Like, you urinated in your tank. <laughs> it sounded like you peed in yeah. your tank. It was fun. It was funny as hell. No matter how much carbon you ran, it, it was oh, still it, yellow. It, it, it was still yeah. yellow. Oh my God. Yes. I I remember those days. Yeah. But okay, so now you, you kind of segue into another into the next subject that we have, and it's the ta- the types of lighting. So now yeah. that we cover why you need lighting in a very basic, very basic, you know, but that's what you need. It, what types of lighting? You cover metal halide. Now, metal halide holds a dear place in your heart, Dave. I know this for a fact. Why is that? It's really how I started this company back in uh, 2002. Uh, I worked for an electrical engineering company that manufactured underwater video and lighting. And we would do a lot of, you know, it was all commercial stuff. But I had some contacts in that world and and, uh, developed a, a, a contact with Fuji Electric. And that was the, the first uh, bulb we came out with was the, the reflux bulb. Yeah. You've uh, been around for a while, but that really, you know, got me into the industry. And then I uh, started making reflectors for them and for those bulbs. Yeah, see it there. That's uh, the Luminarc reflector. So metal halide ballast. So that's really what, uh, what started Coral View in this journey. So... Yeah, and those reflectors were were insane. I know we have a picture that is a close up of that reflector a little bit better, and they were just they were just insane yeah. pictures. Look it at was that. Really, one. it's the the facets and the way it would reflect, put all the light back down into the aquarium. And yes. man, they, those things really could grow corals. But uh, oh, I remember using those reflectors with Iwasaki's. Yeah. So I had I had a seventy five gallon tank, and I used to run two 400 watt Iwasaki's and one 400 watt Ushio blue and they're just to get them to balance out. That's how much light was back in my tank at 75 gallons, but it grew. Oh my God. Did that grow things? I mean, it was, it was fast. It was furious, you know? Yeah. Those was, lumen bright reflectors, they could really, you know, they just put so much of that metal halide back into the tank. Yes. And, uh, it was. I, I look at it as energy out, energy in. Absolutely. That's look at that. Picture, look at that tank right there. Yeah. I mean, I look mean, at that. Just metal halide. Yeah. So what were hey, the benefits? What comes with those metal halides? It ain't the. You know, yeah. They come with their own problems. I mean, you think yeah. about the amount of heat we had to deal with. And I was just going to say that. Let's yeah. let's go over the benefits of metal halide. Like, what 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 makes the metal halide so good? You know. And I, like I, I was saying, it's just the amount of, I think it's the energy, it's the, the amount of power that they can emit from a single source mm-hmm. and, and put that back into the aquarium. It was, it's like corals just thrived on that amount of energy transfer from exactly. the ball reflector to their, to their own. Uh, but, they, but, there were some, that would, but there were some huge drawbacks to it as well, Absolutely. right? I mean, uh, look at the, the amount of heat. And and Carlos, I know you could say I you could be working in the aquarium. You know, you got a sun burn. You're, you're burning. Oh, I, I remember sweating, sweating yeah. from the heat of the lights. Oh my yeah. god, that was the heat of it. Not only the heat from the lights, but then that heat transferred to the aquarium water. Yeah. And you could be in the middle of winter with the windows open and that oh, tank yeah. was still overheating. Um uh, you know, chiller, temperature yeah. control. It was, it was, it was a nightmare. For us uh, in the south, there was really no getting by without a chiller. Nope. Metal it it nope. was almost like you got halides, you run on a chiller. And that yes. comes big expense and a big cost of yeah. running. So they were great to grow corals, but they also had some some substantial some backups, drawbacks. some drawbacks. Most people used to run those metal halides very high up because they yeah. had so much power. They actually you could run them very high up to kind of try to dissipate that 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 heat. All right, so let's go to the next ones. Now the next type of metal that we also that the lighting that we used to that we use is T5 or yeah. pretty much known as fluorescent bulbs, and I mean some people, especially in Europe. They claim that is the the be all 
yeah. of lighting. You can grow anything on 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 their T5s. Now, yeah. here in America, a lot of people will 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 probably disagree with me, but the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you look at those tanks in Europe, and they're yeah. gorgeous with only T5s. Yeah, so, the T5s. I think what really stood out with them is is the different colors mm -hmm. that they could put into these fluorescent tubes and still have a a, a powerful uh, lamp and uh it, it really produced just having those uh different assortment of colors gave a really nice pop to the, the, the corals D, d5s also produce that uv also yeah that's that, another good point. Yeah. That the UV, which metal highlights do as Head well. Too, yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's a UV the UV and they and corals need a little bit of UV yeah. in order to grow, um, uh, just like the sun. Yeah. So um, also another thing that T5s do is they spread the light in a wide long area instead of a single point source where you have a hot spot. You don't have a hot spot anymore. It spreads out through the whole area, which is kind of like yeah. you know, and we'll get into this one a little bit later, but which is what um leds are 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 technically trying to do nowadays yeah yeah yes so success of proof take a look at this tank i know i know our um I, we have a beautiful tank in here also with t5s look at this tank right there they had t5s in there only the t5s lit up and it's blue i mean i know i know connor right now is salivating over that blue with that yeah. pop in there because i know he likes the blue on that one <laughs> They give a nice even spread of light to Carlos yes, where yes. You know, if you have a, you know, we'll talk about LEDs, but you know, LED is a direct point source of light. If you have a look at it under a lens, you can almost see the different colors mm -hmm. from, emitted from the LED. Whereas with a, 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 a T5, it really just disperses an even blend of light. So yeah. But we'll talk about LEDs here in a minute. Yeah, well, actually, you, you brought up LEDs, so might as well let's go into that one. So you know what? We have LEDs. And LEDs are the rave right now, you know? Yeah. I remember when people were saying that LEDs were not going to work back, back in the days, and now LEDs are it. And even in the LED world, it has shifted from single-point LED to a more widespread LED. But let's go back to LEDs. So you said they were a, they're a single-point source. Sure. An LED is a, a light emitting diode. It's, mm -hmm. it's a single point source. And, you know, you can see how tiny these little LEDs are. So then how do you produce an uneven blend? And we do that with uh, lenses and how you exactly. are able to disperse this light um, evenly. Another great thing about the LEDs um, uh, is that you can actually put different leds and get different um uh, get a combination of yep. lighting spectrums to create an overall greater spectrum which is great because now you know with technology and with time we've learned that corals tend to like a particular spectrum so yep. wrong picture april um uh, it would be 16 16 the spectrum um, um thank you there you go so as you can see right there uh, LED allows you to have multiple channels. So when you had a metal halide, you turned the halide and whatever the halide color gave you, that's what you got. You couldn't make adjustments. You know, t with T5s, you know, the T5 had a mix of light, but then if you wanted to get a particular spectrum, you had to mix up different lights or, you know, get a spectrum and then add some blue for the pop for the visual. With the LEDs, you know, one fixture with multiple channels, you can actually control the spectrum of each light to create an overall, you know, overall look and spectrum that actually works better for the core. Uh, yeah, it it is, it, it, I think what the big thing with LEDs is the controllability, you know, yes. tuning what, you know, is good for your animals uh, or, or what you think is aesthetically pleasing to your eye exactly and you know what the leds allow you to dim it you know which is great and then they have an app most leds nowadays they have an app that that just yeah. works well with it you can actually make yeah. some really intricate schedule and as, as i said sometime earlier today it's like you can mac micromanage your light mm -hmm. you know Absolutely. you know you know a lot yeah. of people want to you know it was initially like well leds can't 
grow corals. I think that argument's pretty much been ruled out. Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I, I remember a couple, what is it, a couple of years ago, there's a big company that came out and said that some LEDs out there can't grow corals, you know, yeah. um, uh, because they were the first LED fixture that wasn't using a single point source. So up until about, up until about a year or so ago, all the lighting companies used to grab LEDs and bunch them together in a, right. in a tight knit circle group and then create a single point source because it's right. what grew corals, as, as that's what it said. But then yeah. Philips came out and said, no, that's not right. Actually, it's better if you spread out the lights through a long in a, in a, in a bigger square foot area, you know, and that gives you a more even spread, kind of like T5s. All right. So, um, um, you know, then that, that actually makes it that actually makes corals grow even better. I think, you know, you know, so, you know not to, to single what each individual company is doing, but I think, you know, that what we've studied with Philips and and you look at what they've done with that lens technology mm -hmm. that they've patented, it, it really is something unique. And uh, what it does for with coral growth, we've seen it. Carlos, you've seen it. I've oh. seen it. It's, uh, it. it's pretty phenomenal. You know, and, and the thing about it is it can grow corals, SPS too, highlight SPS. It can do everything as well. The Philips can, which is a great thing. I, I, I like the Philips. Nowadays, the Philips is, the, amazingly, it's it's made by Philips, which is a company that has been in the lighting industry for God knows how long. They know what they're talking about. And after, into, as of today, Philips light is actually the most affordable of all the lights out there. For, a, for something of that half power. And, yeah, for and something spread, of that power. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, one so. thing about Philips, they, a lot of people don't don't know, and, and Philips really hasn't marketed, is they, they build what they call Coral Lab within the, their main uh, headquarters in the Netherlands. And they actually have some data out there and studying coral growth under what their own lights. And it's... Mm -hmm. It's, I believe it's on the Phillips website, if anybody cares to look at it, but it was pretty amazing what they, they found. Yeah. You know, if you want to learn about more LEDs, we actually, uh, you know, about a year ago, a, a year or so ago, we did a workshop with Tulio from Reefbrite. And um, Tulio has been in the lighting industry for a long time. I mean, he's, yeah. he's developed lights. He worked, he used to work for Phillips back in the day. Um, um, and the workshop was excellent. You take a look at it, go back into our workshops and on, on YouTube and watch it. And, and you'll be surprised and you'll be amazed and you'll be you'll be glad that you watched that video. It is full of great, great, great information uh, or on LEDs, period. Not not which LED, which brand. It's just we went over LEDs and it was an amazing video. So before we move on to the next part of the show, you know, I like to say hello to everybody. I like to say hello to Don is here. Thomas Smith is here. Uh, little Ricky is it? Ricardo Lasso is here. Michael Schrader is here. Yeah, and so thank you so much for visiting. If you like what you see, if you like what you hear, please don't forget to subscribe. That's yeah. how you listen to us. That's how you not don't miss a show. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the little bell, and you'll be notified next time right away when we are live. Also, if you have any questions or you know comments about our our products, just head on over to support.coralview.com and you'll get support. You know, you have a problem with a product, you have a question about a product, you need information, you know, you have a tech guy answer your questions. Also, you know, um, uh, we are also CoralView, which means we we, do, we also do hydros right here. If you have a hydros related question, and I know we're not talking about hydros so much, but if, we, if you happen to have a hydros related question in, in terms of LEDs or lighting, please, Head on over to forum.coralviewhydros.com. There's a great community of people there that are willing to answer questions. There's a lot of hydros experts in there that do a great job. All right. So um, uh, on the next part of the show, we'll talk about, you know, what type of lighting should I get in my on my tank? And then, you know, uh, how to figure out what lighting I have and some tips about, you know, taking advice from from online quote unquote experts so um uh, but before we do that we'll see uh we'll see a you know a little a little word from our sponsor
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the music. Me too. I love the music. <laughs> that was great. April, another great, 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 great commercial job. there. All right, before I forget, because my producer April already told me, it's like, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Um, uh, we got, you got six days, and I mean six days, six days to get 20% off on um, um, max spec uh, items. So 20% until March 31st, while supplies last, no rain checks. So don't max come to me. Jump. Yes, don't come to me on April 1st and say, can I still get the sale? Because my answer is going to be no, no, because I told you so. All right, so you have you have until March 31st to get that sale 20% off. All right? All right, Dave, so my name is Carlos here, and my my, my co-host, Dave Dakin, owner of CoreView, and we're here on CVTV Workshops talking about lighting. Yeah. So, Dave, here comes the, the big question that I get uh -huh. all the time. I get it all the time. It's like, which type of lighting should I get for my tank? I mean, at the end of the day, I can tell you every light type, but you'll listen to it. But at the same time, you're already in your mind, you're already, okay, so which one do I get myself? So what do you think, Dave? You know, I, I don't want our show to be about we're only pushing, you know, one manufacturer. We, You know, ultimately, my, my goal is I want people to be in the hobby. I want them to have success. And if they're not a customer of Coral View, maybe I can earn their business at some point. That's always going to be my goal. But, you know, in terms of which lighting to get, which uh, company, I always try and say stick with somebody that's, that does this for a living. That's a real business. There's a lot of people pushing, you know, Chinese uh, Alibaba products out there that they're bringing in. You know, I've been doing this over 20 years. I can't tell you how many companies I've seen come and go in this. And then you you invest your hard-earned money into a lighting system, and none of them are cheap. And then you have no warranty, you have no support, you have no parts for repairs. You essentially then have a throwaway item. So you know, look look for somebody that's been doing this, that, that, or uh, somebody that's standing behind what they're selling. There's a lot of great lights out there that'll grow corals. So is there a right or wrong answer to certain ones? No. They're going to, I believe LEDs and, and lights that are out there, uh, they're going to grow corals. It's, but it's, you know, what's best for your tank really comes down to size of the tank. What animals you plan on keeping in that aquarium. That's really what you want to look at. Yeah. I mean, also, I hate to... And budget, I hate I hate to answer a question with another question, but ultimately right. that is the, that is the thing. It's like, you know, what kind of lighting should I get? And the question, my 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 answer is like, okay, you got to give me more information. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like, what kind of car do I want? Do yeah. I, what do I need? It's like, mm -hmm. well, what do you do? Do you drive to work? Do you use your car for work? I mean, do you drive a long time? Do you drive four hours? Do you like? Do you drive fifteen minutes? I, if you just ask me what kind of card do I need, it's not enough information. You got to give us more information. And this goes for online. If you're asking somebody online, what do you need? You give them as much information you want, because a lot of times you're not going to get an answer because you're not asking the right question. Right. You know, you got to remember when you go online and ask questions, sometimes that same question has been asked over and over and over and over and over again. And there, in, 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 in order for you to get the best answer or to get the most answers is put as much information as you can out there. So yeah. tell us what you have. What kind of fish do you have? What kind of corals do you have? Does your tank is anemones? You know, how big is your tank? What's what are the dimensions of the tank? All that information goes into lighting. We need to know that information in, in order to give you an educated decision. Otherwise, we, we just, you know, we're not. If anybody goes out there and tells you, oh, you need a metal halide without, or you need, oh, you gotta get the, you gotta get X, you know, whatever lighting right. fixture out there is yeah. there. It's like they're just trying to sell you something. Yeah. You need to make sure that you're that, that the person is getting the information you need to to so that they know what you need, okay? All right, so um, um, other things to consider when, it, when, you, when you're purchasing lighting, you know, light, light spread as well, you know? It's like the dimension of your tank is, you know, you have a, a, a box, you know, you have a box that is, it's like, you know, four by four by four. Most likely two lights are not gonna do it. 
So you have to make sure that you know what the light spread and most manufacturers out there, when you see lighting, they give you pretty much a, a, a maximum spread. This fixture is good for up to two feet or, you know, one foot, you know, something like that. So you need to know that also. Par readings are also very important here, and we're not going to get into details of that. If you want details, watch our workshop with Tulio, um, um, and that we all go into details. But par readings are other factors that you have to do. Now, par is not just par. It depends on what corals you have, okay? If you have SPS, you're probably going to need a little higher par. LPS and soft, these corals are going to be a little more forgiving. So it depends on what you have. You know, it's like if you're only going to keep softies, there's no point in buying metal halides or something like that. You're just overspending, you know. I'd like to, you know, make a, a point on par. And you really want to, while that's an important number, you really want to be careful what you're looking at in terms of what manufacturers are putting out there. Yes. You can take a par meter and put that directly under a cluster of LEDs. And it's a huge par number. But then if the light is not dispersed, what happens when you get 12 inches out or 18 or 20, 20, 30? That number plummets if that exactly. reflector or that lens that they're using is not able to disperse that par figure. So Thanks. be careful with that because it's uh, a lot of people want to use it for marketing and uh, it can ultimately become snake oil. Uh, depending on the, the size aquarium you have and and it ultimately can be how many lights do you need you see a lot of these small little leds with these big par numbers but then you find out well i need five of them to cover yes exactly or four foot tank exactly. you start adding these numbers if financially you could be making a huge investment mm -hmm. into lighting exactly so something to, to consider Another thing to consider also, which people don't really think about, is the water turbulence. Yeah. You know, it's water turbulence. How much flow do you have in that tank? Because the water turbulence will cause the will, will also affect how much water gets through to the corals and how deep that water goes down. So yeah. water turbulence is another one, you know. Um, uh, there's there's people out there that argue that water turbulence is or water flow is a lot more important than lighting and uh you know uh to some extent i i i kind of agree you know yeah you know and then one more thing that you have to do is lighting is not something that you set and forget right in the long run yes mm -hmm. in the short run yes if i if i set my lights next week i'm not going to change them the week after and i'm not going to change them but six months from now when corals start to grow and then they create yeah, as they grow they shade the bottom and if you have another coral below it then you you kind of start having problems and that's a great picture right there look at the coral yeah. growth in there but the drawback of that coral growth if i can if you consider that a drawback is that you can't really put anything under or below those corals because they get shaded. Think of a, a forest of, of large trees. And there's a reason why when you walk a forest of large trees, there's not that many small trees growing at the bottom because there's no light coming yep. through, through the foliage. There is no light coming enough through the branches of the corals and that causes problems you know so it's like somebody needed to do some fragging on that tank ah uh, yes yes and send them to dave you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. all right so you know those are things to consider you know there there are a lot of strong opinions out there in yeah. in, in, in 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 this matter there's a lot of strong opinions. People tell you, oh, this works. People tell you this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, those those lights don't work. I tried them for, you know, I tried them for a day and they didn't work. Um, yeah, uh, just, ex just exaggerating. But before, all I'm going to tell you this right now, and this is going to our tips and our tips to on what you, sh you should be listening to or looking to when you get online help when it comes to lighting. And the reason why we do this again is because lighting is such a subjective topic yep. and it is such a passionate topic to some people that it is hard to differentiate between somebody just telling you what they read and they're regurgitating 
in yeah. term and or somebody that's actually has experience and has actually some kind of firsthand experience with the lights. So before you talk, before you take somebody's word on lighting, do your research. Yeah. Yeah. Look don't go the, to just one source of information. Yeah, but There's but a lot the, of sales tactics in this too. Yeah, but do your research because what you want to do, and I'm not talking about retails in here. I'm just talking about regular people. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people online that will tell you this light works, this light doesn't work, this light, oh, you should do this or you should do that. Yeah. At the end of the day, yes, okay, you seem, you seem like somebody that knows what they're talking about. Okay, let me see your tank. Let me see your corals. Let me see your system. Let me see. Is it a system with full-grown colonies or is it a system with a bunch of tiny little frags everywhere? You know, that's the difference. So I'm not saying that proof they don't know what you know, go ahead. the proof is in the pudding. Let's see what you're working with. You know, exactly. A lot of people making noise about buying this or that. What's your tank look like? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, exactly. I mean, look, let's, let's see what you're using. Show me your tank. That's what you want to see. Exactly. I mean, I have, um, uh, let's see, we have, um, let me show you. I mean, I know I have a video in here because I, you know, people see me all the time in here. So I know mm -hmm. that April has a video of my tank in here. So I'm going to have her roll that over, roll that right now. So here is my tank about 2019. Take a look at that tank. Yep. Now here's the same tank, October, the same, uh, two years later, 2021, right there. Same tank, but you can see the colonies. They're getting a lot bigger. Everything is much bigger in there. All right. So, you know, I'm not an expert in lighting. And Dave, you're not an expert in lighting. But we've been around and long enough to know what works and what doesn't. And, you know, um, um, what we say here, and I've always said that, we've always said in the workshops, what we say here are suggestions. Don't take it as law. But before, before you listen to somebody online on Facebook on a forum and tell you, it's like, you got to buy this or you got to buy that. Look at their tanks. Yeah. You know, please do that. Look at their tanks first. And then once you see their tanks, then, okay, do I listen to this person? Do I not listen to this person? You make that decision, but don't make the decision blindly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, um, let's see right here. Uh, lighting is not the be all of reef tanks uh, let me uh, put it that way percent. yep that's it that's not going to be what makes or break you i can tell you it's an important element but and uh you have no idea how many times i hear oh you know it's like i want the same lighting system as you know the biggest company of corals yeah. in in south in in, in, in florida or yeah. you know i want oh your tank is amazing what's your what's your lighting and yeah. the, the truth of the matter is that it's like it's like it's like asking a chef, oh, that dish was amazing. What kind of salt did you use? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Did you use did you use regular salt or did you use Himalayan salt? <laughs> yeah, salt was one tiny wow. component out of the whole thing, of a whole recipe. Oh, you gotta awesome. remember flow. You gotta have water flow. You know, that's the big one. It's 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 arguably one of the biggest things. You got to have a lot of flow in there to wash off the chemicals, to make sure that the chemicals, because there's a chemical warfare, you have to have a lot of flow to wash off the chemicals, remove everything, remove the waste, you know, trace elements. That's a huge, Dave, how much, how much in trace elements were you going through on your tank on a given day? It was, I, I think at one point I was up to 350 milliliters of each component a day that's yeah. trace elements those are additional elements in there a lot of people say okay let's bring take take your nutrients out you need to bring your nutrients down what they don't tell you is that when you bring your nutrients down you start you're, you're pretty much stripping your tank water of food you have yeah. to add something let me put it this way it's like you go on a diet and it says okay you can't eat anything that's no diet everybody knows that if somebody tells you don't eat anything that's not going to work Right. It's, it's what you replace. You have to you have to stop eating the junk and replace it with healthy food. Same thing with corals. You can't just take the nutrients out and not replace it with anything else. Your corals will die. You take them out. You got to replace them with trace elements. OK. Yep. And then don't limit yourself to a single type of light. Metal halide, LED, 
T5s, the three of them, there's no rule out there that says that you have to use only metal halides or do you only have to use T5s or do you only have to use um, um, LEDs. Oftentimes, the hybrid, the combination of multiples actually yields the best, the best result. You run in a hybrid version and it's it's LEDs, right, Carlos? Yeah, mine is LEDs and it's a hybrid version of LEDs because I have the uh, the I have the, the 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 big LED panels with with a, a nice spread LED over the panel and then I have LED strips right next to it. So it's a completely different lighting, as, as you can see right here. There's those are the pucks, and then in the middle you can see those T5 lights in there. They're not on, but there are the T5s in there. So hybrid, you know, gives you, you know, some nice elements uh, that are given from different light source. Exactly. So you can have metal halides and supplement them yep. with T5s, you know, something like that. And that's what we used to do back in the old days. We did it with VHOs. We had the Iwasaki bulbs and then we supplemented them with T5s, you know, yep. and then or we have now we have those LED strips that kind of resemble kind of t5 so they're like like a long strip of t5 of leds that makes it look like a t5 you yeah. know all right so and then you also have those hybrid fixtures that yeah. already come pre-made where you know you have the leds in the middle and you have the uh t5s in the center kind of like the the Giesman aurora right there that's yeah. kind of like the holy grail of it you know so those are things that you can do online just make sure that you know that, that you can that you can that you can do to make your tank better hybrid hybrid lighting um uh, i think dave already covered this also you covered it as a, a proven company yeah i can't you know express you know emphasize that enough that you know things break you you're gonna need a warranty and a company that stands behind the product and support so um, you know, mm -hmm. these lights take a lot of pounding. They're up sitting above water, salt water daily. Mm -hmm. uh, they get pounding on pretty good with the elements. So, you know, these are things that just consider before you, you put your money out there and, and only to find out that they're gone, you know, a few months, a year, two years later. And you, you essentially didn't have a paperweight. So, exactly. Exactly. Also, also, um, um, you know, go with a company that that is known for lighting. I mean, yeah. you know, lighting is a lot of R and D. It takes a lot of work to get to get the right mixture of lights, of LEDs, of you know, of of uh, gases into the T five to 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 make a light work correctly. Yeah. So go with a light with go with a light company that is actually you know made lighting before. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, you have a, you know, you have your favorite company that does, you know, something and then all of a sudden they come up with a light and they, and, and they claim they developed it themselves. It's like, yeah. uh, I don't know. I mean, I know you, you're not a lighting company. You're not a lighting company. So, um, um, you know, go with a, we'll go with a company that actually may makes lights. It's actually, you know, that's the safer one thing to do. You know, one thing I wanted to touch on too, Carlos, is what's the future of lighting look like in our yes. house? in our hobby or industry i'll be honest with you you know coral view started with selling reflux bulbs i think at one point we were selling three thousand of those bulbs on average a month mm -hmm. and the assorted wattage and color temperatures that product line's gone from us now yeah uh, they just it's gone. they're not making it it's in environmentally uh, unfriendly the epa and and other government agencies around the world are, of cutting back on the, the, the mercury content. I don't know if we'll see metal halide bulbs much longer. I don't know if we'll see T5 bulbs much longer. Mm -hmm. um, we're really down now to just uh, a Giesman metal halide bulbs. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just, you know, companies are under a lot of uh, environmental pressure, pressure. To, to stop making these, these lamps. So, you know, that's something to consider too when before you spend any money. And you I, know, I you know. Also lighting comes down to um um the way you run the light. Yeah. You know, it's um you know, lighting schedules, lighting time, lighting yep. intensity, 
you know, multiple intensity at one time. I mean, it's kind of like um, I always call it, you know, if you work out, we call it muscle confusion. Mm -hmm. And what you do is here, an example is you go and work out and, and every day you work out or three times a day, but you do the same exercise over and over and over and over again. Right. Your muscles learn and they learn how to become efficient. So then you don't get the same workout that you did six months ago or th six weeks ago. So muscle confusion is to try to change that exercise over, change it rapidly so your muscles can't get used to the same, the same re repetition again. You're not letting them create that muscle memory. So with corals is the same thing. You know, a lot of people are starting to do that, what they call the, the lighting differences. So they change the schedules around through the day to try to get the coral not to get used to it and develop a single pigment pigmentation yeah. or simple things. So by changing the lights, they do that. One great example we use, and I mean, we, again, we're hydros right here. We're hydros right here. It's, um, um, you know, in hydros, we have different latitudes and longitudes. So you can actually change the lighting schedule based on a location in the world that gives you the time of day. Also, you can change the schedule based on the on the longitude on the longitude up and down, which is kind of like the zenith. We call it the zenith. How far this the sun is from the horizon, you know. So the higher you go, the more intensity you have. The lower you go in the sun, the less intensity you have. You know, yeah. so those are things that you can change on the hydros as well. It gives you a versatility that no other no other controller out there gives you. But I think also that's where it's going to nowadays, Dave, is 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 we may have reached a plateau in terms of lighting hardware and now it becomes kind of like a hard it, it becomes a what can we do control wise to yeah. make those to squeeze the last bit out of out of those lights. Good point. I yeah. think, you know, for me, the the biggest success I've always had is is replicating nature. Yes. So like you're talking about with Zenith and and if you can try and mimic what nature does uh, and, and not just lighting, I'm talking all elements. Correct. Reef keeping has always proven for me that the best success I've had. Some people may not agree. They keep in these high alkalinity levels and higher levels of elements mm -hmm. but for me that's what what i've had the most success with you know and it's also patience at the end of the day it's all about patience dave because patience is the number one virtue as they say right. you know and i'm gonna have april show pictures 25 26 and 27 right now and these are corals in my tank it's patience look at that right there that's left awesome. hand side is an early picture right hand side is the same coral just a few months later Take a look at that patience that's with um, um take a look at that also left hand side early picture right hand side an earlier a, a later picture of the same same coral again look at that in one more picture again right there take a look at that same coral that's awesome you know but that's because it's it's taught it's patience you can't have a light and mm -hmm. continue to tinker with it change the settings right. every day every day change something you do that no you know you have to you kind of have to let you have to have patience on it if in order for, in order for you to know that something is working you gotta let it be for a few weeks you know so if if anybody tells you oh that light doesn't work and they only ran it for three weeks or that light doesn't work because we just measure the par in this yep. particular spot they're they're doing a disservice i think they're they're not doing what they're supposed to do because you have to you have to do the longevity of it you have to make sure that you run it for long enough and then you know where you know what the um you know what the uh if the light works or it doesn't in addition to that you also have to make sure that your water quality is okay yeah you know is your alkalinity stable is your is your you know are your trace elements okay are your elements okay are you running icps and all that stuff because if you if your alkalinity is swinging up and down then the light may be working but it's not going to show because your alkalinity keeps changing mm -hmm. now on, of course lighting is one of the easiest things to blame out there that it doesn't work but really you know it's 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 kind of like a, the, we talked about that recipe there's so many moving parts in the, in a in a in a reef tank that you can't just attribute 
failure to one particular element. You can't attribute um, success to just one of the elements. I hear people mention, oh, this light uh, bleached my corals, or this light browned out my corals. Let me tell you, corals are, are so resilient. Mm -hmm. uh, resilient. They have their own built-in sunscreen mechanism, and it's, uh, they really are amazing animals in, in what they can do to protect themselves. So light being to blame for that is not going to work. No. Look into, like Carlos is saying. Well, I mean, if you think about it, and, and it, this is an extreme example, but there is no light artificially made that can beat the sun. Right. There is no light that artificially made to beat the sun. But you got to remember when you go to reef, when you go to an, a, a wild reef, you know, you, the temperature is often, often is the same. Alkalinity is always the same. Salinity is always the same. It's, it's all about stability. So if you want to measure success, you measure it by stability, not by constantly changing things every two weeks or whenever somebody comes out with a new light out there, version two or version three. You know, you, 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 you do this by, by leaving the stability out there, letting it be and letting the corals do their thing. Sometimes the less, sometimes when I go on vacation and, and I don't tinker with my tank, it's when my tank looks the best. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. All right. And the last tip that we have for, for you is consider multiple sources. Now we are one source. Yep. That means don't listen to me and me only go out there watch there's plenty of videos you do you do a google search for li beginning lighting for reef tanks and you'll find countless videos watch them and you'll find most videos of the good ones they have commonalities they tell you the same thing constant you know don't change things around be patient. Those are the things. Unfortunately, those are the things that you're not willing to listen when you're a newbie. And I know how it goes. I was guilty. I know that it goes. But you know, those are the hardest things to do. You yeah. know, but watch. There's lots of videos out there. Don't take one video or one person's information for granted. Go out there and double check, cross check, do everything you can to watch as much information. And as you as you're watching multiple videos, you'll you'll start to find the things that are common between them and usually those are the things that work commonalities are the things that work that really work all right i like the best when you say carlos let's let's see what your aquarium looks like you know? yes you're gonna pre talk about it and preach something let's see what you did yeah exactly see that salty thumb exactly exactly and i think that's the biggest one i think because i get i get a lot of requests from um uh, people that you know somebody told me that this works somebody told me that this works and um you know it's like my you know in the back of my mind i'm thinking it's like did you see their tank yeah i mean can they are they trying to sell you something yeah i, I you know yeah i'm not saying that they they're not i'm not saying they are i'm not saying they're not but just just for your own peace of mind ask him show yes. me your tank can i see your tank um, um and that will tell you a lot about the person if they're actually looking if they actually know what they're talking about or, or if they're just reading up online yeah. you know you know um, so. yeah. exactly exactly so you're watching cvtv workshops my name is carlos with my co-host david dakin if you like what you hear if you like what you listen to we always stream live on youtube and facebook and hit that subscribe button Hit the bell, hit the thumbs up, especially a thumbs up. I like the thumbs up part. You know, when you see the thumbs up going up and the big smiley faces, those are fun. But please do that because then you'll be notified next time we're live. And you know what? And we also send emails telling people when are we going to have a show. So do that. Also, if you're a big Facebook fan, um, uh, I know those are dwindling down nowadays. But if you, have, if you like Facebook, there's this great group called Coral View Cares. All right. And Coral View Cares is a community of aquarists that are always willing to share information, ask questions. So it doesn't matter. Yes, it's a Coral View Cares by Coral View, but um, uh, we don't care. You can ask questions for products that you bought somewhere else, products that, that somebody else made. It doesn't matter to us. The whole point of Coral View Cares is just that 
to create that community that shares information and helps each other out because gee, we need that nowadays, especially in social media. It's social, so, you know, people helping each other in social media is becoming a unicorn, you know, and that's, and that's a sad thing. So please, let's keep that alive. If you have any questions about the products that we have here, if you have any questions about any of the lighting systems that you saw on the videos here, the pictures, if you want to know the name of the coral, we will tell you to the best of our knowledge. Um, no, we do not sell the frags. So don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't email us for that one. Frags for me. <laughs> no, 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 no. But if you have any questions, please head on over to support that and a tech will be able to help you out. Um, uh, Dave, I, I, I do this and I, I always say this, people come over to my house and, and visit and they look at the corals and they say, my God, this coral is our big, there's, they're big colonies in here. And it's like, you need to trim it. You need to frag them. And I'm like, no, I like the big colonies, yep. you know, I, again, I'm an old, an old school reefer. You know, it's like, to me, you know, when you see two branches, oh, it's a colony. You got to frag it. Yeah. That's not me. I mean, I have to see this thing massively like yeah. this in order for me to frag it. I keep trimming it around so it doesn't, so, you know, like gardening, but I don't, but I don't frag. I like the big colonies and I appreciate people that have the big colonies because that just, you know, you, that, that it's a different level, I think. Yeah. Because if you ask me, colonies are a lot harder to keep than frags. Absolutely. Frags are a lot more forgiving than colonies. Colonies, once a colony starts going, it goes out. You know, it's gone. I think you know. the biggest thing, once you get colonies, is flow. Yes, exactly. You have to have a lot of flow. Flow doesn't stay the same. Yes. And the, the respiration rate of corals plays a big part. Absolutely. And enough flow going across them. So, yeah. Yep. So also, if you have any questions about hydros, because yes, we are Coral View and we do hydros control here, even though we didn't talk about hydros that much in here, because the workshops are, don't have to be just about hydros. Yep. Um, but if you have a question about hydros controller, if you want to know the lighting on hydros controller, please just head on over to forum.coralviewhydros.com. There's a great community of people in there and we're growing. It's actually growing. It's a great community of people in there that are always happy to help with uh, controller questions, yep. you know? And it's great because you can search, search. If you have a question, search, and you'll probably find it. Somebody already asked for it. Facebook, Facebook is so hard to search. It's like people ask the same question over and over and over again because it's just searching is so difficult there. Yeah. So I like that. So Dave, it's a good show, simple. Yeah. We're just you trying know, to share some information, you know. Exactly. No, te not no technical. I don't want. I didn't. We didn't want anything technical. We didn't want anything about par. I didn't want to you push. Know. You know, just single out brands we sell, and I know we picked, yeah. picked on Philips a little bit, but um, we we distribute a lot of brands: Max Beck, Giesman, exactly, uh, Ecotech, AI. You know, we sell all of those, and uh, but you know, there's plenty of ways to skin a cat in this game, but. Hopefully Absolutely. The information we gave you was uh, was good, and we'll try and keep sharing our knowledge. Absolutely. So, I want to say thank you to David Polson. I want to say thank you to Ricardo Lasso, Greg Carroll. As always, great to have you here. Um, Chris Conti, Connor is here as well. I also want to say thank you to April, our producer, for that fantastic commercial and great job on the lighting. You know, on the uh, pictures, I'm sorry. And then Jeremy Reichel, our graphic designer for, for the great pictures that we got. So on behalf of David Dockin, owner of Coral View, my name is Carlos, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.